everyone. I am Vivi Lane, and I'm very excited that I am finally doing an interview for the Session Girl site. Um, so Jennifer, obviously you guys know, um, put out a call to propose questions to me and she just sent them to me, um, the whole list, uh, a couple days ago. And thank you so much because it's a ton of questions. Um, I'm really flattered that so many people were interested and I mean, just almost overwhelmed me a little bit. Um, I printed them out and even after, um, I couldn't do absolutely everything, but taking most of the questions, uh, it's five pages here. Um, so we could be here a while. Um, <laughs> and you know, hopefully you can all skip around through this if I'm talking about, uh, things that aren't your question. Uh, but anyway, one of the inquiries was, could I do the interview while victory posing on someone? Um, and I thought that was a great idea. So we're going to get to victory poses absolutely um, later on in this, but like I just also mentioned, there's so much to cover that I'm going to be sitting down and relaxing through most of it. Um, so here I am nicely arrayed on my, my human seat. Um, and so I do promise, yes, I can be part of this victory posing later on. That's answer to question number one. Um, there are also a few questions that were, can you demonstrate hold? So yes, um, happily I'm going to be able to do that too. But now I'm going to start going through this list. Um, I put them all in order relatively, and we're going to start with the topic of getting started. Um, a few people ask things about like when my first time for this or that, or how I got started wrestling. Um, and we're going to do that. Number one, have you always been so highly competitive or did session wrestling bring that out in you? Um, yes, absolutely. I have always been very competitive and that's a big part of why I got into wrestling and session wrestling at all. Um, people have asked me, um, I did find session wrestling and wrestling, um, kind of through the BDSM scene in New York city. And people would ask, are you dominant or submissive? Um, and especially when I got into wrestling, um, you know, are you really dominant? And I would always answer, I'm mostly competitive, really. <laughs> um, that's at the, the very core of it, uh, really more than any other element. Um, even when I was a kid, my sisters would try to get me to play with them by promising to lose. Um, I really, really like to win, um, from the start. Um, let's see, how old were you when you had your first wrestling match? Well, my first ever wrestling match, I have no idea how old I was really because my sisters and I would fight when I was a kid. Um, not all the time, but there was a, a particular period. Um, we were really little. Um, I was maybe like five to seven or something. Um, and it was like just in that particular period where we were bad about fighting. Um, and I was the oldest, so I actually would win a lot, but then I would feel a little bit bad because I knew I was picking on like, you know, my younger, smaller kid sister. Um, so sometimes I let them have some free shots in there. Um, then I got sick of giving them the other hand and then I would, you know, bust out and win again. Um, but the first time I had a mixed wrestling match, was in college with my boyfriend at the time and we were just really fooling around um he was um he was in the aikido club of the school and so i i had knew nothing about martial arts at that point not at all um uh, so i thought you know wow he must be like really really good and really really tough and this and that um uh, but right i was always very very competitive so just one day when we were like goofing off and started like tussling, um, I would not give up for anything. Um, I later realized that Aikido 
doesn't have a ton to do with wrestling um, and is, is a pretty stylized martial art form. But the fact we ended up in what was pretty much a draw, um, just kind of like locked up, you know, grabbed on with one person's head stuck here and one person's stu head stuck there. Um, and I was too stubborn to give up. So he got bored of being stuck in that position first. Um, so I declared it a win for myself and I thought I was awesome. I thought, wow, I just, you know, beat my boyfriend who's like co-captain of the Aikido team. I must be so cool. Um, he never wanted to do that again, but I kept it in the back of my mind that like that was fun and I would do that again if I got a chance. Um, so I guess I was 21 or 22 because that was my last year of college. Um, let's see. What, oh, so I kind of answered this already. What was the first time you wrestled a man and what convinced you to go through with wrestling someone who was bigger and stronger? Um, yeah, it wasn't a decision. We just like, we were goofing off and we started play fighting um, and I wouldn't back down. Let's see. How did you get into wrestling rather than another sport? Um, are there any triggers, a meeting or social events? Um, well, wrestling wasn't my first sport. Um, I wasn't a terribly athletic kid, but in middle school and in high school, I was doing cross country running. Um, yeah, I, I liked the people on the team. I liked the coach um, and just for fitness, I was doing running. Um, but I didn't love running specifically. It's kind of boring. Um, then I was not at all sporty through college. I was much more into the, uh, the partying type of scene there. But after I moved to New York, um, after college, I got invited to, um, like I said, a fetish party. Um, I also hadn't done anything like that before at all. And I thought that was, you know, cool and exciting. And I was, I was definitely at that stage in my life where I was like, I'll try anything once, um, you know, and, and tell the story. Uh, but I had no idea when I like pretty randomly got invited to that party, uh, you know, what a big deal that was going to be. Um, actually the people that asked me did say there will be wrestling there. And that was a huge part of why I wanted to go. Um, because like I said, I did remember like, oh, it was fun when I, when I beat my boyfriend, um, and I thought I was really good. So I'm like, I'm going to do great. Um, so I got invited to this party and I, I was not as good as I thought I was at all at the time. Um, I lost really badly, um, but to someone who later became a, a very good friend. Um, so again, um, I liked I liked the people I met, and I was excited to get a chance to you know try wrestling. So I was like, "This is great. When's the next time you're doing this? I'll be back." And out of that one party, I did you know meet group of people that became friends. Um, we kept going to other events, um, looking for more chances to do like nightlife underground wrestling. And a, a few of us then decided we, we wanted to really be better. We were just all like scrapping around, not knowing what we were doing. We wanted to both be more effective and be more safe doing it. Um, and started meeting up also to train and this particular group of, of women that was doing this at the time uh, became like the very first uh, generation of Doom Maidens. Uh, we, were, we were excited to be doing wrestling. We were doing it anyway at all of these events and parties, and we wanted to kind of start using it. Um, like, how can, we, how can we use this? We were doing performances then at some of the parties. Um, we then got a tip through one of the ladies um, about session wrestling. Um, and we were all like, oh, 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 there are things you can do with this, uh, which is so cool because we're doing it anyway. Um, and that is how I got into wrestling and how it kind of kept going. Um, let's see, there is one more question here. Oh, which I sort of answered already. How did I get started session wrestling? Um, and it was through the version of Doom Maidens that existed at that time before we were doing videos, um, before it became a video company, it was this group of kind of scrappy New York City 
nightlife ladies um, and a few guy friends as well. Um, yeah, looking for ways to do more with wrestling um, in the nightlife scene at the time. Um, and a fan tipped off one lady who tipped off the rest of us that we could be session wrestling as well. Um, I'm going to talk like crazy, so happily I have water uh, waiting for me. Okay, um, there's a next set of questions uh, on the topics of training and fitness. Um, the first one is what does it take to become a BJJ brown belt? And honestly, it is really, really different uh, from academy to academy and from instructor to instructor. And one of the big reasons that I actually stopped training in gi is because I really didn't feel that the instructor uh, with whom I was training was a very good one. Um, and really the way that people were getting promoted in that class was just by being there long enough. Um, I honestly was pretty discouraged when I did get promoted to brown belt because I didn't think I was ready for it at the time. Um, I really wanted the program to be much more rigorous and demanding. Um, but at the same academy, there was a completely differently minded instructor uh, teaching the Nogi classes. Um, and I'm like, I think I could learn a great deal more and improve my, my grappling much more by going and training with this much more difficult instructor uh, who almost never promotes anyone who if you see him promote anyone, they have just won a major competition. Um, so, right, so it, it takes very different things depending on who you're training with to get promoted. Um, and since I did switch to that particular class, um, I have not been promoted again from brown belt to black belt. Um, and the fact that we're training in nogi makes that even less likely. But I, I feel like I've learned a ton more since being promoted to brown belt than I ever did before. Uh, now at other schools, it could be entirely different and I would not speak to that, but I am a huge proponent of training and practice and knowledge over the rank itself. Um, let's see. The next question is, <laughs> thank you, this is great. Um, in addition to your high level of wrestling skills, your conditioning is phenomenal. Thank you. Um, how did you attain such an incredible physical condition? Um, well, the thing about fitness is that it is much easier to maintain than attain. So it's almost impossible, I think, for anyone to train at a, you know, maximally rigorous level all the time. But when I first got started doing this, um, I was really lucky because I, at the time, was in a very uh, convenient, uh, pretty undemanding office job uh, where if I, you know, clocked out at five, I never had to take work home with me. I was free to do as I wanted. And when I found wrestling, it meant that I had a lot of time to either train or go to the gym. Uh, I found out that I really liked the gym. I started uh, weightlifting. I mean, more seriously, I had done it a little bit as cross training back when I was doing uh, cross country in school. But I made friends with a personal trainer who was able to really point me in the right direction and I found out that I could get great results. So I was so motivated um, right as I was as diving into wrestling and discovering weightlifting and finding out that I you know, could get really good results uh, by doing things right. Uh, you know, I went, I went bananas and I had a great time um, just training so hard. Um, and then as I started to get more and more active and busy in session wrestling, um, and I guess this is true of really anyone who finds that they get more and more, you know, active and consumed, you know, by work or family or other things that, you know, that take up your time um, in life most of the time, 
you know, I've never been able to train quite as much as when I first got started, but if you ever have that chance to build a really, really good base, you know, maybe you're not going to do, you know, five days in the gym anymore, but because you built such a good foundation, three days a week in the gym is going to mean that you can still maintain that level. Um, even if, you know, at a certain point it gets much, much harder to keep progressing, maintaining the level you have, uh, you know, that's doable. That's very doable. So I've done, of course, wrestling, of course, weightlifting. For a period, I was doing Muay Thai training as well, which was really nice for conditioning. Um, and at you know that particular time, really nice for my shoulders. Um, the fact is, I also you know do enjoy a lot of my training. So we've been shut down now for going on a year uh, with with COVID. But like one of my biggest concerns last March when all of this started was, oh, how do I get you know gym equipment into my home? I'm going to want to keep training. Um, and this has actually been another chance where, you know, less has been going on, that it's been a chance that I can do some of the rigorous training um, and, you know, really, really commit. I had a wonderful period right back in, uh, you know, March, April, May, at the very start of this when everything was completely shut, where I could train so much, I could do so much with my gym, and I loved it. Um, and even even now, as things start opening back up again, you start feeling like, okay, I still can't do every day like I was before, but I put the work in when I could, and I can keep maintaining it. And when things open up again, and I'm back to touring, and I'm back to traveling, and I know there are days that I'm gonna miss the gym, I'm gonna say, I put the work in when I could, and I'm gonna, you know, carry that through as best I can when things get busy. So that's, it, cycles <laughs> cycles and focusing and hitting it hard when you can and then maintaining it when you you know can't uh can't be absolutely top um let's see what is your favorite body part and why um of course for me it's my biceps um it's actually not this one <laughs> it is very specifically my left bicep which i feel is my better bicep um I mean, I do definitely lift, um, do curls, you know, work out biceps, but I love them because they're also the part of my body that just most naturally responds to the work that I do. I can put in just as much work on my legs um, and still feel like I have to keep putting in more work on my legs. But if I put in work on my, my arms, I see the results real quickly and I love it. So that is, that is my favorite part. Um, the next question, what size are your biceps? They are 12 and a half inches. Um, I've never been somebody who very easily puts on size. I have tried. I just this past month completed uh, like a hypertrophy and bulking up phase. Um, and I got my biceps to hit 13 inches for like about a day. Um, <laughs> but they naturally, they naturally want to be 12.5. Um, they love to do definition beyond size. And that's what they are. <laughs>